The CNM Seeds Wheat School is brought to you by Bear Crop Science. Okay, Peter, uh, let's talk a little about fusarium. Um, fusarium has definitely been uh, on a lot of farmers' minds. It's in a lot of farmer pu uh, news publications. What kind of impact is fusarium having at the farm level? Yeah, fusarium, Ontario, unfortunately, I, I think we refer to ourselves as the epicenter of fusarium. We just have the the absolute perfect climate for fusarium, and we dodge the fusarium bullet or, or have that fusarium as a huge risk every year. If we don't get it, we dodge the bullet. But every year that I've been the cereal specialist, which is basically 25 years, we have had a huge problem with fusarium at some localized area in the province. Rarely is it across the whole province, but it's always a threat and we always have it somewhere in the province. So what kind of an impact is it having on the farm? Well, it depends on the year. 1996, we lost somewhere in the range of 40% of our yield to fusarium and 90% of the crop was, was feed account fusarium. It just wasn't usable. We had guys that actually dumped wheat in the bush that year because it was essentially toxic waste. That's how much fusarium was in it. Uh, 35, 40, 50% fusarium. So huge impact from that standpoint. Uh, it's just something that growers always have to be cognizant of and, and battling, no question in my mind. So is it completely uh, pertinent to the environment or is there something that a farmer can do during the crop season to try to lessen his chance or is he just basically up against a huge battle? Yeah, so, so number one, he needs to recognize he's up against a huge battle. But can he do something? Absolutely. So you look at genetics, resistant genetics, or not, we don't have any true resistance, but, but genetics that have better tolerance. So that's one of the things he can look at. Uh, one of the other things that he absolutely needs to look at is use of a fungicide, a fusarium fungicide, and there's a whole range of things that come around that in terms of which is the best fungicide, proper timing of that fungicide, which is absolutely critical, and actually proper nozzle selection as well, which is an, another thing that's just tremendously critical in terms of, of avoiding or preventing that disease from, from really wiping you out. Uh, you can do everything right and still have a problem, but if you don't do everything right, uh, almost guaranteed you will have a problem. So is, is there a misconception or a misunderstanding that uh, you see a lot from farmers around the topic of fusarium? Like, do we really understand it at this point? Yeah, and the answer is we don't really understand it very well. And from a farmer's perspective, they're often really unhappy when they go to the elevator and they get that fusarium graded, and the first load they take in is grade two, and the next load they take in is feed, and it's because of the fusarium. So the whole grading system around fusarium is something that's been a huge challenge for us and, and that's primarily because it's very subjective. Uh, it, it relies on the ability of, of the person grading the sample to be able to, to sort out which ones are fusarium damaged and which ones aren't. And of course a lot of that is coloration and unfortunately most most graders are men and about two-thirds of men have some form of color blindness. <laughs> it's a quite a challenge. So, so there is a problem from, from that standpoint and anytime you have a subjective test and the other problem is sampling. I mean there's no question that as you move across the field or if your harvest gets delayed, uh, lots of cases where harvesting on Friday it's grade two, it rains on the weekend, can't get back to the field on Tuesday and suddenly it's feed. Well that's just because the fusarium developed over that, that short period of time to the point to cause a problem. So if you looked at a, a map of fusarium uh, impact in the field, um, the le I guess the level of the level of disease in the field, it, it, it forms in hot spots, right? It doesn't, it's not an even, like, you know, if you have a 1% fusarium infection, it's not 1% across the whole field, there's, there's hot spots, is that correct? Well, it depends on the year. And, and it also depends on, on the cropping sequence. For example, if you grow wheat after corn, the whole field will be a hot spot. If you have a fusarium year, there will be so much fusarium, the whole field will be a problem. But on other years, can you get into variability in the field? The answer is absolutely. And it depends to a large extent on, on microclimates within that field. So on marginal years, where you have areas of the field that have better canopy and keep that soil damper for longer. The fungus itself can sporulate more and you tend to get more on the head. Uh, thinner areas you'll tend to get less for that same reason. So can there be hot spots? Absolutely. It just all depends on, on what year you're talking about. For more information on wheat, go to wheatschool.com.